Forget everything you thought you knew about prehistoric monsters. The Mosasaurus may reign supreme in the oceans, but lurking in the shallows of the Triassic period was a predator so ruthless and terrifying that it earned the title King of the Phytosaurs. This is Nicrosaurus. Imagine a creature with a skull bigger than its body, packed with razor-sharp serrated teeth. Imagine powerful legs that propel it through the water with bursts of speed. Imagine a whip-like tail that steers it with deadly precision. Now imagine encountering this nightmare face to face in a murky swamp. Nicrosaurus is an extinct genus of Phytosaur reptile. Although it looked and probably lived like a crocodile, it was not closely related to these creatures. Instead, being the good example of parallel evolution, the main difference between Nicrosaurus and real crocodiles was the position of the nostrils. Nicrosaurus's nostrils were placed directly in front of the forehead, whereas in crocodiles, the nostrils are positioned on the end of the snout. Some distinguishing anatomical features of Microsaurus are the external nares at the skull roof level, the dorsoventrally compressed and rounded posterior squamosal processes, the broad and heavy rostrum, and a strong pranarial crest. Microsaurus may have been more terrestrial than other phytosaurs. Occurring in marginal lacustrine or outrightly terrestrial settings, it bears longer limb bones, a straighter femur, and a deeper pelvis than other phytosaurs. Combined with its unusually deep upper jaw and heterodont teeth, it was most likely a secondarily terrestrial predator, probably not at all dissimilar from terrestrial crocodilomorphs like Sebesians. Nicrosaurus dentition is highly heterodont, with tooth shapes varying from wide, laterally compressed blade teeth to cylindrical, recurved caniniform teeth. In terms of jaw morphology, a full pranarial crest is a distinctive anatomical feature for Microsaurus capphi. In both the upper and lower jaws, the dentition has five morphologically separated arrays of teeth. Tip of snout set, premaxilla set, maxilla set, tip of mandible set, and dentary set. Moving posteriorly in all of these sets, except the tip of the snout and tip of mandible sets, tooth morphology starts out relatively simple and undifferentiated and gradually changes, resulting in a morphocline. The upper dentition is considered to be tripartite. The anteriormost teeth, or carinae, of the premaxilla set in Microsaurus capphi are enlarged and strongly curved. These are usually the largest teeth of the upper jaw. Much of the other anterior teeth in this set, as well as in the maxilla, are difficult to distinguish from one another. The anteriormost teeth of the premaxilla are firmly anchored and labially vaulted. The number of tooth positions is highly variable for the premaxilla and maxilla sets. However, no studies indicate that there is a direct correlation between tooth count and skull size. Teeth rows usually consist of 40 to 45 members. The tripartite dentition, enlarged carinae, and strong terminal members of the premaxilla suggest that Macrosaurus capphi may be adapted to dismember medium to large-sized prey after killing such prey with a strong, quick blow. Nicrosaurus in general has massive snouts similar to extinct crocodilians, suggesting they prey on tetrapods instead of fish. All derived phytosaurs have an ilium that is characterized by a blade that elongates posteriorly and an anterior process that is short in length. However, compared to all phytosaurs, the ilium of Nicrosaurus capha is dorsoventrally elongated, similar to that of Erythrosuchus africanus. Because of the elongation, the astabulum is also longer relative to other phytosaurs. Compared to Leptosuchus, the angle between the pubis and ischium is also greater. In Nicrosaurus, the proximal end of the humerus is flattened. Because of their resemblance to modern crocodiles, it was initially thought that phytosaurs were also semi-aquatic animals. The slender jaws further suggested a diet containing fish. An earlier study explained that a more massive Macrosaurus could have also had a diet consisting of large land reptiles that came near the waters or amphibians of streams and ponds. When it comes to phytosaurs, most inferences on ecology are in comparison with modern-day crocodilians. However, genera within phytosaurs may also have had different ecological preferences, such as the case for Nicrosaurus and Mysteriosuchus, with the biggest distinguishing factor between the two being the shape of their snouts. The latter had a slender skull with bipartite dentition, suggesting a diet of fish and small tetrapods, while the former had a massive skull with tripartite dentition, suggesting prey were larger animals. Nicrosaurus and Mystriosuchus have both been recovered in the first and second Steen in Arcosic sandstones separated by floodplain mudstones, and were both buried during flooding events in a freshwater river habitat. 
Both genera appear around the same time in Central Europe. Additionally, because Necrosaurus has also found lacustrine sandstones, aerially exposed plains with breccia, and reworked paleosols, a terrestrial and swamp-inhabiting lifestyle seems probable. A more recent analysis of available postcranial bones has provided results that further support the idea of Necrosaurus being primarily terrestrial. The ilium and femur of Necrosaurus are similar to those of archosaurs in comparison to semi-aquatic archosaurs, like today's crocodiles. The resemblance suggests Necrosaurus could have had a more upright walking style that is often associated with terrestrial organisms. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Feel free to leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below.